glad to have each of you with us today. If you take your Bible and turn to Joshua. Joshua. The Bible says for the child of God, not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The word slothful means sluggish, lazy, lackadaisical. Not slothful in business, but fervent. The word fervent means on fire, burning, letting your light so shine. So no matter what we face and how we encounter things, we want to keep the Lord first in our life and honor Him and, and serve Him. So as we turn to the book of Joshua, we find that Moses has died and uh, Joshua is coming upon the scene. And we're so thankful that we understand that no one indispensable. God always raises up the people that He wants raised up at a time. And our God's in control. And we thank God for that. But over in Joshua chapter 1, we begin with verse 1. It says this. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, I will be with thee. I will never fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people 
shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give to them. Verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have, thou shalt, then, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Isn't that wonderful that God gives us a prescription for, the, for right now, presently, in the coming year, if God gives us another year, about four or five days, 2021 will be coming on to the scene. And so we have this, he says, uh, this book of the law, very important we keep God's word into our life. It must be in us and around us and upon us, God's precious word. He said, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. We get depressed, we get discouraged. We get down, get up by the grace of God and move forward in the strength of the Lord. He says, be strong and good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou, be, be, don't be thou dismayed, defeated, discouraged. Uh, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Isn't that a precious promise? Whatever we face and whatever we experience, our God is there. No matter what, no matter if a virus is here, or whatever comes on the scene, whatever you have on your plate today, you out there observing the video that goes out every uh, Wednesday and Thursday morning, you never know who's watching, who's observing. And so here's what we're trying to do during this special time. We're trying to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son. And we find that God says that Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And then on Him, God created all things for Him and by Him. And by Him all things consist or held together. And so the Bible says He must have the preeminence. Our living, our loving, our serving, our singing, our teaching, our preaching. God must have His Son first. And He's the one we want to magnify. And so we know out there we have people from different religions and different backgrounds, all of us different backgrounds, uh, different belief systems. But this is the teaching of God's Word, and we're magnify God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God sent Him. The Bible says all of us have sinned. We've come short. We've missed the mark. We don't meet God's standard of righteousness. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness are as filthy rags as we found last week. Every time you said, well, I'm going to heaven because I've been baptized. Filthy rags. It's a stench in the nostrils of God when you try to put anything before the Lord Jesus Christ. He is sufficient. He's the one that did all the work. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, the one that died, he shed his blood, his innocent royal blood, he shed his blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. We've all sinned. We have sin on us, around us. And uh, the Bible says the one that can take care of a sin problem is the one that never sinned. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that we magnify today. And so we find that as you begin to honor him and love him and as we move forward and uh, the service that he gives to us, we find that this is precious. I want you to turn over now to another passage of Scripture. This is uh, Philippians chapter 3. We move from Joshua into Philippians chapter 3. And we'll read verses 11 through 14. In Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 11, If by any means I might attain unto the righteousness, unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh, you and I who know Christ as our Savior, we know that when death comes to us, the Bible says, absent from this old battle, body of mortality and present with the Lord Jesus Christ in a place called paradise, the garden of God. That's the prospect and the, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And when we die, we know our soul, our spirit goes to be the Lord Jesus Christ. This old body of mortality, they may do different things with it, really immaterial. Some cremate them, some put them 
in a vault and some put them in the ground six feet under. Some people can't even find their bodies because they were blown up in a ship during the war and the sharks ate them. God has no problem reassembling bodies. The Bible says God created Adam out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils for breath of life, and man became a living soul, a living spirit. And so you and I who are dead in sins and trespasses, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, God's righteousness is put to our account. It's imputed to us, just like Adam's sin was imputed to all mankind. In Adam, all die, but in Christ, all are made alive. And so we thank God for that. And when we're made alive in Christ, it's a process and a pro progress of growing and developing in the Lord. It's like a human, human family. When a baby comes from, forth from the womb of the mother, it's the most helpless thing there is. That love must be, that, that, that child must be loved and cuddled and, and shown love to that, that child. And we find that, that, first of all, it needs the nursing uh, milk from the mother or a pediatrician maybe is uh, designed to have. And we find that child cannot grow unless it has the food or the proper diet. And same way with us. We will not grow, we will not develop, we will not go forward without the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, but holy men and women of God, they were, this is, it's not, not private, but holy, they were moved by the spirit of God. They were led by the spirit of God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that the man, woman, boy, or girl may grow and develop and mature. It's a process. It's a progress. Finally, they get out of their arms, get down on the floor, begin to crawl around, getting into this and getting into that. That's the same thing with Christians. I don't know how long you've been saved. If I say over here, probably... Who's been saved the longest? Anybody been saved 20 years over on this side? All right, there's one. Anybody been saved 30 years in here? Anybody been saved 30 years? Anybody been saved 50 years over here on this side? So you see, there's different ages. And so, scale one to 10. How have you progressed? How have you developed? Where are you right now in serving your Lord? He says this. We get lax, we get lazy, we get indolent, we get careless, we, we, we forget, and, and God wants to stir. He says, uh, Peter says, God will use me to stir you up by way of remembrance. We forget things. And so God wants us to grow and develop. But here in this precious passage here, Philippians, he says things here. He says, uh, we haven't reached that, 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 that place where we... Finally, after they finally crawl around, then they begin to be a, a kid or a child. And uh, foolish is bound up in the heart of a child. It's just built in. You don't have to teach a baby to, to do wrong. It, they, they, it just comes naturally because that, that sin principle is in each of us. And it's there too. Back, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust or desires. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death, dying, disease, heartbreak, heartache. Uh, uh, scars that we really don't, don't need. But it's choices we make every day. Where we go, what we do, who we run with. It's very important we try to keep our focus in the proper way. And it goes on to say this in Philippians chapter uh, 3. Uh, looking now at verse uh, 12. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect or mature, fully developed. But I fall after that, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended. I haven't fully developed or I reached that goal yet. It's a process and a progress. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind Moses, my servant, is dead. No one's in this but God will have another replace him. And Joshua comes upon the scene. He says, you want to be prosperous and successful. Do not depart from the word of God from the left hand to the right. Keep the word of God before you, in you, in you, that you might properly be developed. How long has it been since you out there have read a chapter? 
How long has it? Maybe you read maybe two or three chapters. When have you really got into the word of God? And yet we, we get so busy. We're so busy. I don't have time for church. I don't have time for the word of God. I don't have time for prayer. Then slow down. You're, you're too busy. Listen, slow down. And uh, look what God has done for you, what God is doing for us. We need to honor him and love him and stay in the book. Forgetting those things which are behind. All of us have skeletons in our closet, we say from time to time. And all of us have done things that we should not have done and been where we should not be. And the devil likes to come in and shake those, those, rattle those bones, so to speak. To discourage you, to depress you, to defeat you. But God does not want you to stay there. Get up by the grace of God. Confess your sin. Call it by name. For, ask God to forgive you. The Bible says if we confess our sin... He's faithful and just to forgive our sin. We're not getting saved over and over. That's not even true in the Bible. Some, some, some churches teach you've got to be born again. Their famous song, I must be born again and again. And again. There's no such thing. As, if you're born again one time, you're saved forever. Amen. Amen. We're kept with the power of God. <laughs> I like to use this illustration. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they know me. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall I and pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave me is greater than no man. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. We're in the hand of Jesus. We're in the hand of God. The Bible says we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. A seal represents ownership. A finished transaction. It, 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 it assures us. It's assurance. So when you receive Christ. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that through, he, through his poverty might be made rich. We're rich in the blessings of Almighty God. We need to love him. We need to serve him. We need to honor him. Forgetting those things which are behind. The devil likes to... Forgetting those things which are behind. Learn from those experiences. But moving on with your life as we face the new year 2021. Don't just keep going back there. I used to be in church. I used to serve God. I used to tithe and give my love gift to Jesus. But somehow I just got away. Why? Get back on track with God. Get back and listen. The only way you'll be fulfilled, the only way you'll be happy and truly successful is when the word of God is a part of your life. The Bible says all scriptures given by his spirit of God is profitable. The Bible also says this. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than to any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the spirit and the soul, the joints of the mark. That's where your blood comes from. So the word of God affects your spirit, your soul, and your body. It affects your whole being. And when you don't have the word of God in your life, you'll never be happy. You'll never be complete. You'll never be satisfied. And you get the word of God into your life, then come to the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to honor him and love him and serve him as that, that's why, listen, the reason he's leaving us down here, that we might serve him. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works. We're not, saved, we're not saved because we're holding on or holding out. We're not saved because we're working. We, we're saved because the work of Christ has made us complete. We're serving him because now our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. And God is working with us and through us as we yield to him. Do not walk in the spirit of the flesh, but let us walk in the spirit daily that we might honor and love him. Forgetting, put it down. Number one, forgetting those things which are behind. My successes, my failures, my faults. Forgetting those things and moving forward. The right focus. Keeping our eyes on Jesus. Not our problems, not people, but keeping our eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Redeemer, our Savior. He wants us to be fulfilled. He wants you to really be happy. He wants, you to, he, wants to have, he wants you to have a joy unspeakable and full of glory. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to be prosperous. But there's things that you have to do for that to come true. First of all, you must know Christ as your Savior. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Kept by the power of God. And daily yielding myself to Him. And let the Spirit lead me to serve the true and living God. He says this. Notice something else he says in that verse. He says, 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Stretching and reaching forth for those things that God has for us out here in the future. For today, He gives you special grace. He gives you special strength. One day at a time. You cannot breathe enough of the air for tomorrow or next week. It's one day at a time. That's what God gives us. One day at a time as you serve the Lord Jesus Christ with what God has put within your hand. Your time, your talents, your treasure. Give them back to God. God will honor them. God will bless them. God will use them for His glory, for the good of others. He'll bless. We move on to another place. Not only forgetting those things which might, but reaching forth to those things which are before us. Whatever He brings before us, whatever He puts on our plate, God will give you the grace. He'll give you the grit. He'll give you the guts to love Him and to serve Him if you make up your mind to do that. You don't have to be wallowing in your self-pity. and I use, No, no. Do it today. Do it today. I like that sign P word. Just do it. Just get it done. <laughs> Honor your Lord. Sir. <laughs> Point number three in verse 13. I press toward the mark. You have a goal. Do you have a target? Do you have a mark? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting, reaching forth, pressing forward to those things which are before. Not getting back and, no, no, get up and keep moving for Jesus. Isn't that good? That'll, that'll make a bad show. Are you ready? Amen. Give me a praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for saving me. Jesus shedding your blood, dying for me. But thank God you didn't stay in the tomb. On the third day, he rose again. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? We sing about his birth. We sing about his death. But thank God he rose again. That, <laughs> that's where the victory is. This old corruption must take on incorruption. This old mortal must take on immortality. And when this corruption is taken on in corruption, and this mortal is taken on in mortality, then it shall be brought to the pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God that gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That would, I think we'll just stop right there. Isn't that beautiful? Victory in Jesus. A lot of first things. A lot of first things. I put down about 10 of them. We love him because he first what? Yes. Here in his love that we're not, we didn't love God, we loved him and sent his love be the, be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. God so loved the world, you and me, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should not perish but have everlasting life. A lot of first things. Knowing this first, as we said, no prophecy of the scripture, any private interpretation. Holy men and women of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of God. God wants to move you. God wants to use you. God wants to develop you if that's what you want. Every man is tempted. Not, not a sin to be tempted. Jesus was tempted 40 days and 40 nights by the devil. It's when we yield to that temptation. Every man attempted when he's drawn away of his own lust or desires. We all have desires. Some, when it doesn't line up with the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, it's sin. Sin is crossing the boundary. Sin is the transgression, overstepping God's word. Have you overstepped God's word? I have more than I like to admit. But I'm thankful God is so merciful. God is so patient. God is so gracious and forgiving. Aren't you glad of that? You out there observing as we close this service, if you never ask Christ to be your Savior, do it today. Drive a stake down today. But today, on this day, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the, pray this prayer. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on that cross and shed your blood. I believe on the third day you rose again. I believe that I accept that. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me today. Thank you, Jesus. And we who are saved, oh God, help us to go forward, to honor you, to love you, and to serve you, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Been
Oh